My name is Ethan Suplee. I'm 43 years old. I'm an actor. Today, I weighed 263. The heaviest I ever weighed on a scale was 536 on a uh, big um, shipping scale because doctors didn't have scales then, they might now, that could weigh me. I was five. I went to visit my grandparents in Vermont and they weighed me on a scale. And that was the first time I had ever even thought, oh, uh, there's something with my weight. I remember being in elementary school and the, the little kids at, in preschool, every time I'd walk by them would, would be like in awe at my size and talk openly because they're like unfiltered little kids. I, I remember in school, and I left school at 14, but I remember the feeling of not having a girlfriend or not being able to get a girlfriend, that weighed on me. And then I started acting and the weight was actually kind of a benefit because I was like, I had kind of encapsulated that role. If there was a young fat guy character, I was close to the top of the list for, for a time. I mean, you get fed so much on a movie set, it's insane. I think the only people that it actually works for calorically are like the grips who are constantly carrying heavy equipment from place to place and burning a shitload of calories. But for an actor, if I just have to stand there and say something and am otherwise sitting, it, it doesn't work out calorically. So I would eat at work, but I'd normally get food and eat it alone in my trailer. I wasn't eating in front of people. I felt guilty about eating. Like, I guess some part of me knew that my weight was due to me eating either the wrong foods or too much foods or not eating right. And so I would eat kind of privately. And I had met this girl who was just a normal down to earth girl. I really cared about her. And I started to see that the things she wanted in her life were not going to be, I wasn't going to be able to accomplish them in the way she wanted to. She liked to go on hikes and she liked to go to the beach. And these were things that I was not super comfortable doing. And if we had to go uphill at all, and I mean like one or 2%, that's kind of like out for me, or it was in thinking about, um, how I could improve that relationship and, and make sure that it was really long-term, the biggest thing was getting healthy. I have done OptiFast, which I don't know if it exists anymore. Maybe it's SlimFast, something like that. I've done Atkins, I've done Zone, I've done South Beach, I've done Fit for Life, I've done Body for Life, I've done the Beverly Hills Diet, the Hollywood Diet, the Cayenne Pepper Diet. There's some other fantastic, I've done the Blood Type Diet. I've done Paleo, I've done Keto. I was of the school of thought that it was food's fault. There was some aspect in food that was doing it. If I blame food or some aspect of food, then it's a more confrontable thing. I found Dr. Mike Israetel's TED Talk, The Scientific Landscape of Healthy Eating, and I watched it. I think I watched it four times in a row, and I was like, he is saying stuff that is contradictory to the past 18 years of my dieting. For 18 years of dieting, it has always been something about the food that has been the problem. And what he's saying is, it is not the food that is a problem. And I was like, what the fuck is this? 
And I decided I'm gonna try this thing. I'm gonna fucking sit down. I'm gonna figure out how many calories my body size would burn normally. I'm gonna figure out what a slight deficit is. And then I'm gonna program it for what he's talking about. And then it was a steady progression down. Now, it hasn't just gone down. It fluctuates a little bit, which I've had to get cool with because I only wanna see it go down. Um, and I have to like kind of mantra my way through that with science. People who've done a ton of diets, I would, I would stop looking to blame food if that's what you're doing. In these um, 40, 55 pounds, I've done two maintenance periods. And this way that I'm doing it, having maintenance periods to like adjust is super key like in the middle of the program because you're setting yourself up for some end period where you're like oh, i've already done that four or five times i know what that is versus fucking white knuckle diet to a point and like now what do you do i haven't done this and now this is just for the rest of my life i think the way it's worked in there you really get a sense of what maintenance is how beneficial it is and i have and it's been great I go to the gym and lift weights with this one goal of retaining all the muscle I have and I enjoy having that goal and I have a fat loss goal and I enjoy having that goal. I, I enjoy seeing it get closer and closer. I actually believe that I need goals and if, if I have no goal then I'm not producing to my highest of the highest that I'm capable of producing. The goal now is fat loss. And I've already got a goal ready for when I hit that goal, which will be muscle building.